Hello everyone, and welcome to the Kitty Items walkthrough video series. My name is Andrea. I'm a dev advocate on the Flow team. And in this video series, I will walk you through what is Kitty Items, how to install it, how to run it, how to make changes to it, and how to develop on Flow, both on testnet as well as the emulator. For those of you who have never heard of Kitty Items before, Kitty Items is a NFT marketplace sample app based off of CryptoKitties. So it's a great resource to get familiar with if you're interested in building an NFT marketplace on Flow, because it shows you more or less 80% of the things that you need to do to make a full production ready end-to-end -end DAP on Flow. So if you're looking for a very, very beginner and bare bones tutorial, this might not be the best thing to start with. You're welcome to, and you're probably gonna be able to do it because the setup script and actually running it is gonna be very simple, but it may have a little bit too much complexity than what you may need to just get your feet wet. So if you just wanna get your feet wet, I recommend maybe starting with a simpler tutorial, playing around on the Cadence Playground, and yeah, just you know start with baby steps. And then once you actually wanna build an NFT marketplace, this is a great resource to dive into and dissect. If you haven't done so already and you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure that you also follow along on the Flow Docs. We have a whole section dedicated to kitty items. You'll find it on docs.onflow.org slash kitty dash items. And you'll see it has different steps as well as extra content for when you want to maybe dive a little bit deeper later. So what will we learn today? We will learn how to deploy and update smart contracts. We will learn how to mint and transfer NFTs add a new kind of NFT to the marketplace, which will require us making changes to the front end, to the back end, to the cadence contracts, uh, you know, everything. And then how to interact with the Flow blockchain from within a web application. You can already try out the live demo here. We have an instance deployed. So we can click on this and you'll see this is Kitty Items running on Testnet. Uh, what is testnet? You may ask. Well, testnet is a clone of mainnet, which is the actual real flow blockchain. Testnet is a parallel chain that is used for trying out applications and contracts before actually deploying it to the real chain. What we're going to be learning today is both how to develop on testnet as well as locally using the, the flow emulator. We'll show you how to emulate the whole flow blockchain on your computer as well as using a dev wallet and making sure that you can iterate quickly. And when you're ready, you deploy it to testnet, see if it all works. And then if you're ready, then, then you can deploy to mainnet. I will wait to give you the tour of the actual app. Once we have it running locally, I will use this time to kind of walk you through the architecture. It's composed of three main sections. Now, everything within the purple box is KD items related with the exception of the flow client library. These dotted lines represent parts of the whole stack that are not specific to KD items. So the wallet, everyone on flow uses a wallet and KD items is no different. So people interacting with your KD items app will be using a wallet. If it's on testnet, it will be blocked owned. If it's on the emulator, it will be the FCL dev wallet. And the flow client library, you can see it as the equivalent of web3.js for Ethereum. It is the, the way that we access flow and the way that we authenticate users and we sign transactions and we run transactions, essentially anything that goes through flow goes to the flow client library. And the great thing about, about the flow client library or FCL, as we affectionately call it, is that it completely abstracts away the concept of wallets. So as an app developer, you integrate with FCL and wallets integrate with FCL, but you don't need to care what wallets people have. A user that comes into your DAP authenticates via FCL using whatever wallet they want and your code does not change, which is awesome. Let's look at the kitty item specific uh, components. We have the front end, which is a classic React, Next.js and Tailwind application, which connects via an API to the backend. The backend is an express server using SQLite to store and cache some information like sale offers and events. And then we have a third component, which is the smart contracts. And the smart contracts are the actual code that runs on chain and regulates what's happening, right? When you make a purchase, 
we sign a transaction using our wallet through the flow client library, but what we're actually signing is the permission to run a specific snippet of code, which is defined via the smart contracts. And in this case, in the case of flow, smart contracts are developed using cadence. Cadence is a new smart contract programming language that was built specifically for flow. It addresses a lot of concerns that other smart contract programming languages have. So we have the concept of resources that represent things that cannot be cloned, cannot be lost accidentally, which is exactly what we want when we're representing digital assets of value. And yeah, I think we can cover each step in a little bit more detail as we go on, but why not just jump right in? All right. So in the next video, we're going to be making sure that we have all the necessary dependencies, cloning the repo, getting everything installed, and then we'll start running it. So we'll see you in the next video.